Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to look into the future. The very short term future and specifically about Blender. Because Blender just released their 2021 development roadmap and it gives us pretty good insights of what to expect from upcoming versions of Blender. Now if you've been following the developments of Blender, these aren't really shocking. Most of these things you will have probably heard of, but there's some very nice stuff so that is what we are going to do. Now first off, before I get in this too far, I should point out that Blender 3 Alpha was just released a couple of days back. Back. I did a video about that. It's interesting. There's literally nothing new in it. It is pretty much a placeholder for the future. At the same time, uh, Blender 2.93 is in beta. Blender 2.93 is a significant release because it is the next LTS or long-term support version. We'll get back to that in just a minute. So now let us go gaze into the future. So over on the Blender developer blog, which I will link in the linked article down below, uh, they did a bit of a rundown of what Blender's 2021 roadmap is going to look at. So 2021 promised to be a busy and exciting year, working on second LTS release, and on Blender 3.0 includes a lot of new developments. This year also marked the 10th anniversary of the Cycles renderer. Uh, emphasis on modules is a way for everything, uh, everyone in the development community to get involved. Combined with Blender HQ project teams, you should bootstrap new uh, existing initiatives while making sure they are maintained in the long run. So we've got lots of planning going on here. Uh, the Blender 2.93 LTS version or long-term support version is being released in May. There is an LTS version every two years, basically, that it's going to be... Oh, actually, no, I think it's every year, uh, but it's going to get development releases for uh, two years' time. So that is definitely uh, nice to see for projects that need to kick off and have, you know, a stable, reliable, know that the file format isn't going to change on them, that kind of stuff. So if you're working on a long project, those long-term support versions should be nice for you. So we get a bit of a breakdown of what the priority projects in 2021 are. Quick TLDR version of it is the Asset Browser and Pose Library, Library Overrides, Geometry Nodes. I know many people's favorite thing here, Vulkan Support. Grease Pencil Improvements, Blender 2.93 Long-Term Support, Cycles Development Improvements, Animation Character Pipeline, the USD or Universal Scene Descriptor, I believe it stands for, Importer, and then Blender 3.0 uh, User Interface Workshop. Uh, the last time they did this user interface thing, it really helped uh, when they got a bunch of people together and worked on how to make a UI that makes sense. We did get a much better UI as a result. So first off, we have the Asset Browser and Pose Library. Uh, this started quite a while back in 2016. It's basically a way of storing assets in a more usable way inside of Blender. Uh, they're starting with their pose library for Sprite Fright. Uh, Sprite Fright we'll get back to in just a minute. Uh, it is likely the pose library system will become the first target for the asset browser project. It will be completely integrated in the viewport and animation editors and help focus the asset browser project in time for Blender 3.0. So when you're working with um, assets, you know, uh, prefabs, stored models, textures, poses, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be a, a much more pleasant system going forward under the new asset system, and they are starting with poses. Next up, we have the library overrides, which replaces the old animation proxy system. Um, current development cycle aims to finish rigging, syncing, and wrapping up the system's final documentation, also being used in Sprite Fright. Also, more about Sprite Fright in a moment. Uh, initial policy cycle will be followed by another project to tackle the restrictive pipeline. At that time, riggers will be able to handpick which properties animators are allowed to override. Uh, so riggers can set things up in a certain way so that you can tweak and modify things or not, which is kind of nice, especially when you're in a larger environment where you have you know, dedicated riggers, TDs, animators, uh, modelers, and so on. Uh, next up, we've got uh, geometry nodes. This is part of the everything as nodes thing. Basically, think Blender Houdini. Um, so we've already got the very early part of geometry nodes in, I think, 2.82. Um, and we're getting more and more nodes coming online. So eight-week-long cycle had four pillars, wrapping up the Blender Studio requirements and polishing, everything nodes design, attributes workflow, and the node tools. There are 20 new geometry nodes that were introduced, include the long-awaited mesh primitives. So again, this was 2.82, I think, there. Um, so a uh, few sprints were dedicated to design and prototyping, helping to prepare the ground for future projects. This includes collection nodes, revalidation of the hair node design, node tools, pages, and portals. So basically, we're going to get more and more nodes as we move to a node-based future. Uh, the one that everyone loves, Vulkan. The drawing backend is being prepared to receive Vulkan. Abstraction of the drawing API will allow Blender to use more modern libraries for drawing, which should help make EV more memory efficient. More memory efficient generally also means faster. So that's definitely nice to see, although don't expect fast 
blast immediately, because it's worth noting there are no immediate performance boosts expected from Vulcan's integration. However, it will help make Blender future-proof and ready for vendor-specific platforms. To be honest, I don't really think that'll be true. Almost every project I've seen that has been ported to Vulcan on the back end has also seen a performance boost, uh, just kind of one for one. So, uh, but they're, they're studying expectations accordingly. Don't expect, you know, Blender to get five times faster when Vulcan is implemented. And then Grease Pencil, their 2D drawing system, uh, it got a big improvement, recently added line arts. Um, uh, emphasis this year will be on new line art modifiers, storyboarding, I.O., better Bezier editing, and features for 2 and 2.5D two and animation feature films. Uh, we talked about it earlier on the Blender 2.93 LTS version. So you can see here, it will ship in 2021 in May, as they said earlier, and it will have two years stable. So I misspoke earlier on. Basically, there is one new LTS version every year. They last for two years. So we had our first one was 2.83. That's the current LTS version that's out there. And that was in May of 2020. We will also get 3.3 in May of 2022, and then 3.7 in 2023. So you can see this, this basic trend. Every year they will release a stable version that's going to get bug fixes and improvements for two years duration. Again, it's really nice if you're working on a project and you can't have breaking changes over the course of that project. Um, cycles improvements. Um, also, weirdly enough, in its render API, thanks to a dedicated developer working closely with Facebook. Remember, Facebook came on board as a developer grant uh, earlier this year. Uh, Blender Project is hiring a new senior rendering engineer to help the Cycles team. Hiring process is almost complete. <laughs> What's that? They're either uh, hiring or hired. Uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, 10th anniversary of Cycles is on April 23rd. Celebrate the working on a special surprise. So stay tuned for April 23rd. We will see what happens there. We've got improvements to the animation character pipeline. There was a couple of companies. Oh, I forget exactly who it was, but someone came on with a large grant on the animation side to make things better. Um... So we've got improvements coming at the animation character pipeline. Uh, so in the past, this project was put on hold due to a lack of industry support. It required both a talented multidisciplinary team and funding or in order to bring everybody on board. So now they have both. Uh, industry veteran Jason Schleifler will act as liaison for this project. Pose Library and Library Overrides are part of the tools expected for this pipeline. However, better tools for rigging playback and animation uh, in, I think they meant general, uh, but in generation will also be tackled. So basically, no real specifics here, but uh, there are a dedicated team working on the character animation pipeline. Another big thing here is USD. Again, I believe it's Universal Scene Descriptor, but the D might be wrong on that one. But what it is, is a universal um, file format. I believe it was Pixar that first created it. Uh, it is kind of becoming the industry norm. And NVIDIA, uh, who are big into USD with their Omniverse project, uh, are bringing support to Blender. So Michael Kowalski is working directly with the rest of the Blender team in order to make this happen. Initial plan is to focus on USD importing uh, as the exporter code is already in place. Uh, so soon we're going to have USD importing. Import is built on top of the existing IO pipeline. However, collections for IO have also been discussed and may become part of the USD integration. The USD is kind of, it's like the next Colada, but I think it's it's working. <laughs> So it's not in the age of XML where everything was super, super complex. And then finally, uh, more work on the user interface across the board. Another workshop on it. The last workshop did result in some really nice UI improvements. Uh, so they are working towards the Blender 3.0. Um, as soon as international travel is possible again, there will be a UI UX workshop in Amsterdam. Basically what happens is they get everyone together in a room for a few weeks time and it really does make a difference. So that is uh, the thing. And then of course, there's a bunch of stuff that... Uh, you know, could come up, who knows. And then there's a few ideas being considered, including independent physics clock in the viewport, mesh editing optimizations, brush manager for painting and sculpting, snapping improvements, real-time viewport, video compositor, collection settings for persistent IO and baking, restrictive overrides, collection nodes, and dynamic particles. So that is what 2021 has in the works. Now, I have to say, as a modeler, not as an animator, not as a renderer, not as anything else, I am not seeing much. <laughs> So um, then again, sculpting keeps getting love every single release. So I'd imagine that's not going to change. But that is the roadmap for 2021. What do you think? Also, finally, Sprite Fright. In case you do not know about this, Blender keep making these open films. They've created 12 of them already. Sprite Fright is the 13th. Basically, what this is is something called dog fooding. It's using your own tools in production to find out if your own tools work. 
and to improve your tools and add the new functionality you need to make them work nicely. I think every company should dog food. Some people say that uh, Unreal Engine has an edge over Unity because Epic Games use Unreal Engine to make their own games, and thus it's production tested and, and refined for the industry, whereas Unity does not make games. I'm not going to say one way or the other on which side is correct there, but the process of dogfooding is not new. This was the way Microsoft worked for years. If you worked on the Office team, for example, you would be using the alpha or beta versions or the daily builds in your daily life, so even with the development tools. They've always dogfooded their stuff, and... It, you know, it, it generally works and results in better work. And Sprite Fright is basically Blender doing that as well. Now, they, again, have done a ton of these. So if you want to check out all these various different shorts that have been created, you have no doubt seen Big Buck Bunny, probably Sintel. They're used in examples all the time. Uh, but they've made a number of these projects, and a lot of the assets and resources from them are actually open and available to you as well. So that is Sprite Fright, their newest in-development uh, project that is, again, uh, kind of driving the development of the tools forward. Uh, it's always interesting, these tools, and if you join Mender Cloud, you get access to all kinds of stuff in it. Uh, so that is that. That is the uh, developer roadmap for Blender 2021. Uh, let me know what you thought. Is something there that you're particularly excited about? Or is there something missing that you would have loved to have seen? Let me know. Comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.